Well, good morning uh, and welcome to our latest Sierra Wall Gas Academy event. Uh, my name is John St. Louis. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Sierra Wall. I'd like to thank each of you for taking the time this morning to attend today's presentation on the fundamentals of PE ball valves for gas distribution systems. Uh, our presenter today is Ben Marchisio. He is the President and Managing Director at Brown Valve Technologies. Uh, a few housekeeping items before I hand it over to Ben. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please submit them using the chat or Q&A feature found in the uh, Zoom taskbar. Uh, we will do our best to answer them in real time during the presentation or at the end of each section of the presentation. Uh, also, we do have several polls throughout this presentation, which you will see as a uh, simple pop-up on the screen. So we encourage you to take part in those as well. I would now like to hand it over to Ben for today's presentation. Ben. Thank you, John. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Ben Marchesio. I'm the president of Braun, based in Houston, Texas. And uh, Braun is one of the partners for CR Wall um, for the Canadian market. So first of all, thank you, CR Wall, for organizing this event and for inviting me to present. Um, this is a great opportunity for us to uh, discuss uh, PE ball valves in uh, natural gas distribution systems. Let's start um, uh, with a safety moment. So this is uh, uh, about uh, bike riding. It's an enjoyable activity, but there are some risks that we want to be aware of and mitigate as much as possible. Uh, the season is very nice. Uh, and I can tell you by experience that bike riding in Canada is much nicer than Texas. Few uh, safety recommendations. So first of all, check your bicycle. Uh, uh, I recommend to use the ABC check where A stands for air in your tires, B for brakes, and C for uh, uh, cranks, chain, and cassette. And also check your lights if you're riding in the, in the dark. Stay hydrated and nourished. Avoid uh, being hungry or thirsty to get uh, your food and your drinks. Anticipate the need, uh, your food and drinks are the fuel that let you go. Use your sunblock, uh, obey traffic laws, watch out for cars. Uh, it's always better to double uh, check. No headphones, it's important to listen to the noise of the, the roads. Um, wear your helmet and proper biking clothing, and most importantly, enjoy your ride. By the way, the guy in the picture uh, on the left, uh, it's uh, me. Uh, some people may recognize the place. It's the Olympic Park in Calgary. Uh, it was some years ago, but I was riding the Alberta Ride to Conquer Cancer, which is a beautiful event, and it is for a good cause. So if you enjoy riding, uh, uh, I strongly recommend to consider it. It's uh, every year in August. Let's uh, start uh, our uh, presentation on PE with the first uh, poll. Uh, we want to know from you uh, in uh, your company, in your uh, PE gas distribution systems, what type of valves uh, you use. Do you use steel valves with transition pieces? Do you use PE valves? And of course, there is a, an, another option for I don't know or the company I work for uh, doesn't manage PE systems. Thank you for participating. Okay, so uh, it's interesting. Uh, most of the people uh, use uh, PE valves, which is good. There are still some people uh, using steel valves uh, with transition pieces. Unfortunately, we will not have the time to discuss uh, why uh, the reasons behind this, uh, uh, this decision. I hope that going through this presentation, you will get more familiar with the PE valves and uh, uh, you will uh, acquire some information uh, about the safety and the quality of those products. So the presentation uh, is structured in several sections. It will last probably uh, about 45 minutes. Uh, the first section is about the introduction of PE piping materials uh, for gas distribution service. We will then 
quickly work through the two main standards that are usually applied uh, in North America for uh, PE valves. And then we will have a section about expectations when sourcing and using PE valves. The last section is about the future of PE materials in gas distribution systems. Um, and then we will have uh, some time for conclusions and Q&A. But again, don't wait, as John said, to the end of the presentation to submit your, your questions. So let's start with the first section. Why using PE piping materials in gas distribution compared to steel? There are some advantages. Uh, PE doesn't cause any corrosion. It's not subject to corrosion. It's uh, uh, resistant to chemical attacks. There is no fluid uh, contamination, low friction. So the pressure drop into piping systems is uh, reduced. P materials are flexible, so they are easy to store and install. They are also light, so they are, again, easy to store and to handle. The life expectancy is extra long. Uh, some people say it's uh, above 100 years, but it is for sure longer than steel materials. And then there is a cost advantage. You also have to be uh, aware of some uh, uh, concerns and limitations. PE uh, is subject to UV degradation. So PE piping materials are recommended mainly for underground service. There are some limitations in the pressure rating, depending on the uh, P density, but also, of course, uh, the regulation. The temperature range is more limited. There are some limitations in sizes. Uh, P is more uh, susceptible to damage uh, during construction. And uh, PE piping is not easy to detect by itself in underground service. So again, a lot of pros, but also some uh, uh, limitations to be aware of. Let's see how uh, often PE is used uh, in the existing uh, systems. So this information is based on FEMSA, so it's official information. It's uh, uh, dated 2015, so it's not the most updated, but for sure uh, plastic materials are more and more used. And again, it's related to the US, but I think it can be extended to Canada as well. So 54% or more than 54% of the materials used in uh, main lines are plastics. If you look at the uh, service uh, systems, the percentage is even higher. It's above 70%. So for sure, uh, plastics, and when we speak about plastics in gas distribution systems is mainly PE, is by far the most used material in gas distribution systems in North America. So it is widely used, proven, and a mature technology. After this brief introduction, let's move to the standards. Um, the first standard is the SME B16.40. The title is Manually Operated Thermoplastic Gas Shutoffs and Valves in Gas Distribution Systems. It consists in two, um, six sections scope, construction, configuration, pressure rating, marking, and then the last section is about production and qualification testing. In uh, the presentation today, we will focus on this uh, last section because I think it gives you a sense of the quality, reliability, and safety of valves made in uh, polyethylene. So the test requirements are uh, basically grouped into two. The first one is production test. Uh, the second one is qualification test. The standard requires 100% of the valves manufacturer to be tested uh, according to the requirements for production test. So each piece is not a, a sample test. Each individual valve has to be tested. And then for the qualification test, each basic valve design has to be qualified by testing randomly selected production valves. Hi, uh, Ben. There's a uh, question here. It says, uh, have P valves been tested for the use of hydrogen blended in natural gas? Uh, say it again. Sorry, Mike, I could not hear you very well. I, I'm sorry. It says, have PE valves been tested for the use of hydrogen blended in natural gas? Okay. So this is a very good question. Thank you for asking. 
uh, we'll discuss about hydrogen uh, at the end of um, this presentation when we discuss the future of um, P valves. So I'll keep that for later. And uh, uh, B16.40 uh, doesn't specify anything for uh, hydrogen, it's only natural gas. So uh, again, I will get back to you uh, later during the presentation. Um, so going back to the presentation, uh, section 6.2 of ASME B16.4 is about production testing and the requirements are for two tests, shell test and seed test. The test conditions and the test requirements are the same. So the test has to be done underwater with compressed air as the test media. The pressure has to be 1.5 times the design pressure and the acceptance criteria is no uh, leaks to be recorded. And here in the picture, you see two pools where valves with different sizes are being uh, tested underwater. The qualification testing is uh, a group of tests very demanding. It consists into five, uh, again, groups of tests split into uh, more uh, tests. So the first one is operational test requirements. Um, the standard as a table with the maximum operating uh, torque that is acceptable. And the test consists in operating the valve with no leakage and the, the torque has to be within the accepted values. The second group of tests is the temperature resistant test. And it consists into two tests, low temperature, at, uh, the valve has to stay at minus 20 Fahrenheit for 18 hours. And then uh, again, no leakage has to be recorded and torque has to be uh, within the, um, the acceptable values. And then there is a high temperature test, 18 hours at 140 Fahrenheit with the same um, acceptance criteria. Then we have the sustained pressure test, um, which is uh, again, two tests, pressure boundary uh, test, uh, six valves have to be connected, open, at uh, 176 uh, Fahrenheit for uh, 1,000 hours at low pressure or 170 hours at high pressure. And again, the sh the no, no leakage is acceptable. And then there is a sustained uh, pressure test. Um, so the valve is pressurized at 1.1 times the design pressure. And it is for a thousand hours uh, at 100 Fahrenheit or 170 hours at 176 Fahrenheit. And again, no leakage and the valve has to be still oper operable after the test. Flow capacity. Again, uh, there is a table in the standard uh, uh, describing what is the maximum uh, acceptable pressure uh, loss. And finally, the impact resistant test, uh, a 20 pound weight, uh, free falls from three uh, foot on the stem at low temperature or high temperature. The, this test has to be repeated five times. And uh, the acceptance criteria is that the valve has to be operational with no leaks after test. Here we see some pictures of uh, valves being tested. So on the left hand side on top, you see uh, the operational torque test where there is a uh, torque range uh, operating valve. Sustained uh, pressure test uh, on the bottom and uh, on the right hand side, uh, a valve being uh, impact uh, resistant tested. At Broin, we exceed uh, these test requirements and we also X-ray um, valves, at least one piece for each production lot goes through uh, x-rays to verify that there is no uh, voids or inconsistencies in, uh, in the components. In Canada, uh, most of the companies accept as maybe 16.40. Some companies uh, require um, compliance with the Canadian code, which is CSA B137.4, uh, uh, whose title is PE pipe insistence for gas service. And the first section about valves, uh, which is the one highlighted here on the right, says that to comply with that uh, Canadian standard, 
valves are required to comply with ESME B16.40. So again, it's uh, this exact same requirements. Let's move to the second uh, uh, standard, uh, ASTM F2897. This is not uh, um, required, it's recommended, uh, and it is about uh, traceability. Basically, this uh, standard describes uh, a barcode that has to be applied on PE valves. Here we have an example. This is taken from one of our uh, Ballomax PE valves. And uh, we will walk through each uh, digit in this code uh, to, to show you what information is provided. So the first two digits, uh, in this case BM, are the manufacturer code. So each manufacturer has to submit to the Plastics Pipe Institute the two digits they want uh, to use for recognizing they're recognizing their valves. So BM is for Ballomax, which is the brand by Braun for P valves. Then we have four digits um, for the lot number. The, the numbering system for this uh, code is base uh, 64, is not base 10, which is what we usually use to count. So two, B two N is translated uh, into five one nine one one three zero in base ten, and uh, the first digit is the material. Then from the second to the fifth digit is the uh, date we receive the raw materials, and then uh, the last two digits are used to identify the materials lot. Then we have three digits for the production date one digit for the material and here in uh, in this case is h so it is p4710 the other two options are a and b for the two other um, p materials v1 is for ball valves and then uh, you have three digits for the size and the additional digit for potential future use You can uh, download for free um, an app called the Gas Scan that is available on iTunes or Google Play uh, to read uh, these barcodes. And uh, here I have an example uh, of what you read if you scan one of our barcodes. So again, the exact same information that you saw in the previous uh, uh, picture with some additional information that are related to the manufacturer, uh, contact information. But again, this is a very easy and very handy. So we covered the section on the standards. Uh, Mike, is there any, any questions on this or sh should we just move on to the next section? I'll just uh, move on and then if- Hi, Ben, yeah, it's John here. Yeah, no, uh, there was one question, just uh, will we get a link to the recording of the video? Yes, there will be a, uh, a link of the recording sent out uh, after the presentation. Okay, good, thank you. So let's move to the next section. Uh, so we require, I recommend that all of you require P valves to comply to those standards, but P valves are not all the same. So let's see what we recommend you to, to ask for when you source and use P valves. So first of all, uh, the quality depends on the quality of the resins that are used. Uh, here you see the resins that uh, Braun is using uh, for medium density or high density uh, valves. They are from Borealis, Ineos and Dow. So uh, very high quality companies that ensure uh, consistency and quality and performance. Then uh, we recommend to, uh, to verify that the valves you source uh, are 100% plastic with, without any uh, metal components. Again, one of the advantage is that uh, uh, PE uh, is not subject to corrosion and therefore there is no uh, contamination. Uh, some manufacturers uh, use uh, uh, screws, uh, washers, uh, steel made, 
and that could compromise the quality of the valves. Uh, our valves are 100% plastic or rubber. Then we recommend to ask for extra long pups. Uh, they are more forgiving. They allow for multiple uh, uh, fusions. In this picture, you see uh, valves made by different manufacturers. Our Braun Balomax valves are the, the, the ones on top on the uh, left-hand side. The second uh, next to them, uh, which have a comparable length, uh, actually it's not uh, uh, simply valve. It's a valve with uh, um, pups added and fused. So that is not the, the real length of the valve. Then uh, we recommend to have heavy duty operating nuts. Uh, the valves are usually in a valve box underground, uh, but they can be subject to being heat uh, or, uh, uh, I mean, valve operators can be using their whole strength to operate valves. And our valves are made in graphite reinforced polyethylene, uh, ensuring extra strength. And then uh, availability of valve modifications. Uh, in the picture here, you see a four inch uh, Ballomax uh, uh, valve with six inch extended pops. Um, we have a network of uh, partners that can uh, fabricate uh, extensions or even uh, uh, valve assemblies with bypass, um, bypass or, um, or other modifications. Uh, so again, we, we would be happy to consider any uh, special requirements besides valves that you may have. Here we have a list of the uh, advantages that the Ballomax P valves offer, and some are repetition of what we just uh, saw. So again, top quality resins, a comprehensive size range, large pore size, 100% plastic, without any metal parts, extra uh, long ends. It's, our valves are extra heavy. Just by handling them, you see how heavy they are, and that. Uh, uh, means uh, the valves are extra strong. Same uh, with the heavy duty stops uh, we have. Uh, so it's very hard. It's not impossible, but it's very hard to break uh, the stops. And then we can provide any fabrication or extended pops to our partners uh, in the US and Canada. Here is a summary of uh, what we offer. We have valves in uh, P80 medium density, yellow, and P100 high density in sizes from half inch uh, to 16 inch uh, in compliance with the uh, ESMEB 1640 and the ESTM 1988. All uh, come with the barcode uh, with the EST, uh, in compliance with the ESTM F2897. Um, and the temperature range is from minus 20 uh, Fahrenheit up to uh, 140. Then we've got a, a question here. It says, can PE valves be installed on steel distribution pipelines? Any concerns? Yeah, yeah they can. Um, of course, you need a transition piece. It's not very common because uh, uh, most of the advantages in PE uh, are not just related to the valve. It's in a, a comprehensive PE system but they can. Uh, and again, there are some advantages in terms of uh, light, corrosion, lightweight, corrosion. So the short answer is yes, it is possible. Here we have a short video that uh, uh, summarizes what we just discussed. Um, so I will launch it and I hope you will uh, enjoy it.
Okay, we are ready for the second poll, um, which is, uh, which of the following statements do you agree with? Uh, I would prefer to use PE ball valves for gas distribution service where possible. I think steel valves are better and safer than PE valves. And last option, I do not have a preference. The choice depends on too many factors. Okay, thank you for participating. Then, uh, then we have uh, another question here too, if you don't mind. Okay, go ahead, Mike. It reads, uh, curious on the ASTM barcoding. Will we have to request this every time or will this become standard in the future? So uh, I know the slide I, I showed was stating upon request and that is uh, my bad. I used an old, uh, um, an old slide. So when we were going through the transition, we still had some valves in stock that didn't have it. Uh, but now all our valves have it. So it's, uh, it's a standard. It's uh, available on all our valves. And by the way, um, the PE valves uh, are uh, available from our stock here in, uh, in Houston and also with CR wall in, uh, in their uh, stock in Canada. Let's move to the uh, next section. So future of P materials in gas distribution systems. So when we uh, speak about the future of natural gas in these days, uh, we all speak about hydrogen and hydrogen blending. Uh, it seems that the hydrogen uh, revolution is promising and very uh, close to happen. So um, green hydrogen blending seems to be one of the most promising technologies to make the energy industry cleaning, cleaner by taking advantage of the potential of renewables. Uh, what do we mean when we speak about the hydrogen revolution? So first, the first step is to produce uh, power with renewables. And we all know that uh, renewables have some uh, um, limitations in terms of uh, availability. Uh, the examples here in the pictures, you have uh, solar panels uh, and windmills. If there is no sun or no wind, uh, there is no production. And this is also combined to a limitation in uh, storing the power generated. So uh, here, uh, hydrogen comes into picture. Uh, basically, the concept is to use the power generated with the renewables to produce hydrogen from uh, water. Hydrogen can be stored. Um, and then it can be blended into natural gas uh, uh, and used uh, more or less with the same uh, uh, appliances and systems that are already in place. This uh, uh, concept is uh, still uh, relatively new and there are a lot of uh, uh, studies and research ongoing to evaluate uh, specifically the materials uh, compatibility for that service and the steel materials have some uh, limitations. They are subject to uh, hydrogen embrittlement. Uh, there are some concerns about uh, the stress introduced by uh, welds, and there are also concerns about uh, uh, threaded joints. So the question for us today is, what about uh, PE uh, instead of steel? With um, uh, the American Gas Association, uh, I'm part of uh, an effort of uh, reviewing the existing technical literature and we are writing a white paper on hydrogen blending and one section is specifically about plastic materials and PE. And uh, this is an ongoing process, so I would be very happy in six months to have another webinar with the findings and conclusions of our efforts, but uh, I want to anticipate some of our findings. and. Um, I put together some quotes from some of the materials uh, that, uh, that we are reviewing. So this is uh, an abstract from the papers from a uh, plastic pipe conference. Uh, and here it's the, it says, P 
and PVC pipes can withstand the impact of sustainable gases, including hydrogen, up to 20%. Another quote, uh, I cannot really read it because I have the, uh, the other screens on the right hand corner, but basically it says that uh, permeation happens, but uh, um, it's not a, a, an issue. And also electrofusion procedure, uh, when P pipes are exposed to hydrogen, uh, present no issues. Hydrogen causes no voids or uh, mechanical weak uh, spots in the fusion uh, uh, zone. So the conclusion is that uh, uh, transportation and distribution of uh, hydrogen in uh, P uh, systems is uh, safe and reliable. And again, this is another extract from the conference in 2018 uh, organized by the Plastics Pipe uh, Institute. P have no uh, corrosion issues, uh, and also there is no sign of aging. This is the uh, THYGA um, research. This is an, a, an experiment that is ongoing uh, in, uh, in the UK, um, where they, they have a, a system where they are testing hydrogen blended uh, with natural gas. And here another um, uh, project in the UK called High Deploy. And uh, they sp uh, speak about uh, uh, absorption of hydrogen um, without any effects. And also the tensile uh, properties uh, are not affected by exposure to um, hydrogen. They also uh, confirm that uh, electrofusion or diffused area has no issues and uh, squeeze off uh, is possible using the standard tools, standard procedures without any uh, integrity issue. So the conclusion is that for what we know now, PE is hydrogen ready. Uh, of course, with all the limitations we discussed before, uh, so it's a limited uh, pressure rating uh, in uh, exposure to UV, but PE seems to be very promising for uh, hydrogen service. Going back, Mike, to your question about uh, uh, test. For the time being, uh, there is no uh, standard or code uh, recommending any test procedure for hydrogen. Um, at Broin, we have been supplying valves for 100% uh, hydrogen service, uh, not for gas distribution, uh, but they, they, those valves were used uh, in refineries for uh, hydro cracking or hydro treating, which is actually an even more demanding service because it's not only hydrogen, but it is also at high pressure and high temperature. And uh, what we do um, as test uh, is using uh, helium. Hydrogen is a very risky uh, element. Um, is uh, inflammable and it is uh, um, poisonous for men. Uh, helium is much safer, but it's the physical properties are, are very comparable. So what we did uh, was uh, uh, a pressure test, shell and seed test uh, using helium. We never did the test uh, with PE valves uh, because we didn't have a, an opportunity, but um, what we recommend uh, is to to test uh, all piping materials with helium. Uh, unfortunately, again, there is no uh, internationally recognized uh, testing procedure. So it's uh, left to the either the purchasers to specify the test they want to, um, to get or the manufacturers. But again, the standard approach when it gets to hydrogen is to use helium. And I'll, I'll add to that, Ben, there, there is some, some good uh, resource material on the uh, Plastic Pipe Institute uh, website as well. Some of the uh, uh, valuations of material uh, properties and, and compatibility, so. Yeah, and uh, uh, as I said, I'm part of the AGA effort uh, to write a white paper on hydrogen. And uh, the participation to that effort is extremely broad. So the Canadian Gas Association is participating. The Plastics Pipe uh, um, 
Institute is participating. And actually the effort on plastics is led by uh, people in the Plastics Pipe Institute. And there are many utilities, including Canadian ones, and uh, uh, many manufacturers. So I think that effort is being very informative for myself, very interesting. And uh, the goal is to present uh, our white paper at the AGA conference in, uh, in October this year in Florida. Uh, I'm not 100% confident we will be able to, to make it, but uh, we are progressing fast. Uh, and um, and hopefully, hopefully you will be seeing the, the outcome soon. And where do you think the hesitation is to deploy PE valves in, in our distribution systems? We, we certainly see it. What do you think contributes to that? So uh, it's, uh, I think, a combination of factors. It's that uh, it's not enough to have uh, PE. Um, I mean, natural gas is used also at high pressure, so beyond the limitations of PE and uh, some equipment uh, uh, are just made like gas turbines are not made in PE. And uh, when you have uh, steel people, steel equipment, people think uh, also of the uh, transportation system to be uh, steel made. But so far, uh, all the research done uh, is very encouraging regarding uh, PE. So in general, some people have hesitation when it gets to plastics because it's newer than steel, even if we know it's not new. I mean, PE uh, piping materials have been used for many, many years. So now it's really a proven technology. Thanks, Ben. We've got another question. Uh, <clears throat> it reads, is it possible that hydrogen has a higher permeability rate than methane? And this can cause a hydrogen accumulation when pipe is inserted in casing. Yeah, so I think one of the quotes was comparing uh, uh, here. You can read, uh, let me do this. Oh. Let me see if I can uh, go back to sharing. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so now it's more readable. Uh, so it is true that the permeation rate of hydrogen through PE is higher than the one of methane. However, risks are comparable. And, and again, this is just a quote that I uh, extracted from uh, the papers of that conference, but all the statements they are making are backed up by uh, research. So um, the question makes a good point. Permeation is higher, but uh, from a safety perspective and integrity perspective, it is still safe and usable. Thank you. Okay. So we are ready for our last uh, poll, uh, which is uh, about uh, hydrogen readiness. So the question is, at your organization, how hydrogen ready are you? First option, we have not launched any specific initiatives uh, yet. Second, we are in the early stages of pilot projects, feasibility study, early engineering. And the last option, we have pilot projects in advanced uh, stages to deliver hydrogen blending to users, uh, completed or to be completed within one year. So Ben, I, while we're uh, waiting for the, the uh, results to come in, can you talk about CSA certification and PE valves a little bit? This, this question comes up, this topic comes up often. Yeah, so um, our valves are not CSA uh, certified because uh, there is a process to get uh, uh, access to the stamp, but they are CSA compliant. So again, if you look at the, the body, you don't see the stamping, but, um, um, but as we saw, being in compliance with the ESME B16.40 uh, ensures uh, compliance with the CSA 
uh, relevant code. And uh, let's uh, briefly comment these uh, poll results. So it's, uh, it's interesting to see that there are uh, initiatives uh, ongoing, that is the majority of the answers, 53%. Um, there are also some uh, uh, participants who have pilot projects in advanced uh, stages. For me, uh, my personal take on hydrogen is that it is exciting. I think uh, we are at the beginning of, uh, of a revolution. Uh, I don't know how fast we will get to full implementation, but the progress that I'm seeing is very fast. Uh, and I can tell you just in my uh, limited experience, AGA is not the fastest association. Usually uh, things take a lot of time to happen. With hydrogen, again, we are not super fast, but uh, we are doing a lot of progress. I'm really impressed. There, there is a, a strong commitment by all the people involved. And again, it's uh, associations, uh, utilities, and manufacturers. So across the board, there is a lot of interest. And uh, I'm excited. I'm curious to see how it will uh, play out. And it will be soon. So Ben, <clears throat> I'm going to take it right back to the CSA discussion again. Well, there is no actual standard for PE ball valves to be certified to in Canada, correct? We are Z662 compliant though, correct? So let me again uh, go back to the presentation. Can you see my screen? Uh, no. Can you now? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So uh, CSA, oh, I don't know what I did. Let's try this way. Okay. CSA has a standard B137.4 uh, that is for piping systems and the section 3.1.4 is specific on PE valves. So there is a standard, a CSA standard for PE valves. But the, again, the first statement in that uh, uh, standard says that uh, the requirements for PE valves to comply with the CSA standard is to comply with the ESME. 16.40. Okay, thanks. thanks for clearing that up. There, there was a question that says, if there is no CSA standard for PE valves, how can other manufacturers use the CSA stamp for a gas? No, no, PE no. Valve? Oh, sorry. So the CSA uh, stamp is an option. Uh, so other manufacturers that stamp uh, their valves uh, are not doing something wrong. We are not there, uh, and it's mainly a matter of process. Uh, getting the, the authorization to use the stamp, you have to, to go through a process and pay some fees. And uh, um, we didn't do that for our Balomax valves. Uh, and uh, again, having compliance uh, with the uh, ESME B16.40, we didn't see the need of having the CSA stamp on our valves because we, to ensure compliance through uh, ESME B16.40. But it is an option for manufacturers, including us, to go to CSA, go through all the, um, the, the auditing process and getting the authorization to stamp valves. Okay, thanks, Ben. So we, uh, we covered uh, all the sections and we are ready for the conclusions. So few quick uh, um, uh, PE piping materials are extensively used for gas distribution systems. They have uh, several advantages when compared to steel, but they also have some limitations that we discussed before. Uh, when you source uh, your valves, make sure that they comply with the requirements of uh, ESME and the ESTM standards. 
Within the valves that comply with those standards, the Ballomax ball valves present several advantages when compared to the competitors' ones. And finally, uh, you cannot use PE valves for all applications, but Ballomax is also steel valves. So uh, whenever you cannot use PE valves, uh, we will have uh, the, the valve for your need uh, for gas distribution uh, service. And again, uh, Ballomax in Canada is a CR wall. So uh, feel free to reach out to our friends at CR wall for whatever need of uh, brown valves uh, you may have, or for any uh, requests for clarifications, technical information, drawings, uh, or, uh, or meetings. Uh, we will be happy to hopefully soon schedule in person meetings uh, or have webinars uh, or share all the materials we have. So that is it for, uh, for me today. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, if there is any uh, last questions, I will be happy to, um, to answer. Yeah, there was just, there, Ben, there was one comment about uh, the CSA again, I'm sorry. I knew this question would, uh, this topic would be uh, quite uh, prevalent. Um, there is no testing that we can do with regard to CSA, you're either ASM, uh, what is it, B16 compliant or not? Uh, say it again. Well, there's no test. You can't test your valve to something. You're either compliant with the ASME standard or not. Yeah, so CSA, the CSA standard reference to ASME B1640 also for test. So the test requirements are the same. Okay, okay. I think that uh, clears it up to our uh, attendee that asked. Is that uh, clear? Okay, thanks so, Ben. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, it was a pleasure presenting uh, um, our perspective on uh, uh, P valves. And I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you found it uh, interesting. If you have any feedbacks, uh, here on this slide, you see our uh, email address, or feel free to reach out to, again, our friends at CR Wall. That's good. Thank you, Ben. Much appreciated. Thank you, Thank everybody. you everyone, uh, for joining us. Hope this was uh, valuable, and look forward to seeing you soon. All the best. Thank you. Bye.